Right, so here's my uh, replication of the Alexander patent, some sort of rotary transformer or inverter thingy. Um, what I've used is a 24 volt, 400 watt motor, and um, you'll see here I have our two slip rings and brushes, um, which is picking up the AC side of our uh, motor and the way we've achieved that is uh, one slip ring is tapped into one segment of our commutator and the other slip ring is 180 degrees on the other side tapped into this segment of the, uh, of the commutator so um, that gives us our AC output from um, our DC input we have been able to replicate his waveform near exact so uh, he actually has um, a separate set of windings around the rotor to achieve this but uh, we're doing it by tapping directly off the commutator um, and our two points as I stated uh, 180 degrees apart which gives us a uh, messy chopped up waveform like he shows in his pattern so, um, as far as I'm concerned, we don't need to be winding individual windings around because um, the waveform that we're getting, the way I've done it, um, as suggested by a fellow member of the forum at um, Over Unity Research, gives us the exact same result, other than the results of his uh, power in, power out measurements. Uh, we'll be driving it at 23 volts and the reason for that is this bulb here is only a 12 volt bulb um, and that's going to be going pretty hard as you'll see a little later on in the video uh, I do have a 0.1 ohm 5 watt CVR there um, so we're going to be calculating our power output by way of the scope um, and of course we will gain our current reading across this CVR and the other side of the scope is directly across the light bulb only so um, it's not taking into account the voltage of the CVR but uh, we're doing this so we can check the power factor and make sure that there is um, no phase variation between voltage and current uh, these two meters here this is reading our DC current in I have a large smoothing cap there to quiet things down a bit um, through our switching on the commutator and this is reading the voltage across the motor because we will get a voltage drop through our click leads and through our digital multimeter here that's reading the current which is set on 10 amp scale DC this is set on the 200 volts DC so uh, we can get an accurate um, power in driving our motor and we'll be able to get an accurate power out um, it's been dissipated across this bulb by way of the scope so that's our little setup <coughs> excuse me uh, so we'll get the show on the road turn our scope back on as I said our yellow channel on the scope is reading our current the blue channel is reading our voltage that's going to give us, once again, uh, power being dissipated by the bulb. Uh, a little bit by the CBR, of course, but not much. And um, also to check our power factor to make sure it's pretty close. So uh, it's time to start her up. Um, these are my two outputs from our AC. I simply got to put the clip lead on that one to fire up the AC side. Uh, we're underway so we'll get a um, power in reading without um, the AC hooked up or a load hooked up to the AC and then we'll get a power in and power out reading from our um, DC and AC side once the load is connected to the AC okay so she's away and running um, like I said, no load, no 
in our output at the moment. But we have around 630 milliamps. About 22.7 volts. See our scope's doing nothing but uh, seeing a bit of noise here at the moment. So we'll um, hook on our load. As you can see, quite bright. Um, our DC input now is about two... About 2.07 amps. Fluctuating a little bit. I can do about the uh, power delivery here. Um, average is around 2.5 amps. Average output is around 2.07 volts. DC, 22.2 volts. Now, AC side, the globe's a bit of a pain in the butt, isn't it? Uh, okay, on the AC side, we can see both the voltage and the current are very much identical so we would assume that our power factor is quite good we have 200 millivolts across our 0.1 ohm CVR which is 2 amps and an RMS voltage across the globe of 14.8 volts So from that we can um, gather our power calculations for our power in and power out once again about 2.065 to 2.07 and 2.06 to 2.07 amps at 22.2 volts. Once again, we have 14.8 volts RMS at 2 amps across the globe. So our quick calculations tell us that we're nowhere near three times the output as stated uh, by Alexander in his patent. Okay, so. Um, not much more we can do. Um, I have found that if I place a cap of the correct value across the AC side, <coughs> um, without the load on it of course, um, our idling power into our DC motor drops by about 30 milliamps. So, um, not that that's going to do us any good because we're not doing any uh, mechanical work on the motor so um, and unfortunately I can't check that because as you can see I have no shaft left here um, and the back one doesn't stick out it's just sitting in that bearing there so there's uh, no real way I can place a mechanical load on this motor the brushes will supply some sort of mechanical load but very little um, and the shaft is only 6 mil, so uh, drilling a hole and tapping that shaft will be some delicate work going on there and extending the shaft out the back would also be another time consuming project that's not really going to result in anything at all so, um, as far as my results go, it's uh, not so good. We're um, not even close to unity, really. So we're losing a lot of heat in the motor as well. Or should I say, a lot of uh, energy will be dissipated by the motor as heat. So um, this is running at a loss, and not uh, three times a game gain as claimed but uh, however I do not have separate windings around the rotor for AC 
I'm simply creating that AC across our uh, commutator by um, having our AC output um, pulled off one commutator, two commutator segments that are 180 degrees out from each other. But the waveforms are identical, and so I don't think I'm going to waste my time trying to find a motor where I can fit another set of windings around it, which in these motors here, which are quite well made, um, that's just never going to happen. So they are my results, and um, unfortunately with this one we won't be packing the bags and heading off to the Bahamas anytime soon. But um, I now have a motor that um, I have no idea what I'm going to use for. But, um, we might find a use for it one day, who knows. Okay, so uh, for me that's a, um, another one debunked. And as I said, I really do not think it's going to make any difference having separate windings on the rotor isolated from the DC side because the waveform is going to be exactly the same. Um, and uh, I believe we would end up with the very same results as do some other well-versed people in the EE community. So, uh, that's it from me for this one. No cigar yet, but uh, we'll keep on working on it. Thanks for watching.